Welcome to Freedom Life Center. We are so glad that you tuned in today, and we're glad you tuned into this, this television station. We're very grateful today to have the opportunity to bring you this message today from Freedom Life Center. And we pray and trust that it will be a blessing unto you. Now let's go into the service already in progress today. God bless you. Bible. How many have your Bible or your iPad or device, mechanical device that has the Bible on it? Amen. The younger generation uses um, mechanical devices more than us a little bit older people. Amen. I turned 21 last week. I feel real good about it. Uh, times that a few times and we'll be where we need to be. Praise the Lord. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Just take a few minutes this morning to share with you something that was triggered in my heart yesterday. Uh, and normally I I have sermons already lined up from the beginning of the week or something I had been thinking about. And the Lord spoke to me last night after I got home under exhaustion. Have you ever been exhausted? And I just sat down in, in the chair that I use to meditate and read the Bible from a lot. Any home we've ever lived in, I've chosen to um, place, a designated a place where me and God meet. And uh, it's a familiar place. It's a place where uh, each time I bow down in that area, I make it an altar out of it. And uh, I don't know if you do that or not, but I encourage you to do that. Find a familiar place to get along with the Lord on a daily basis, on a, at least as much as you can. And uh, I always find the Lord there. It's, it's a place and it's, um, it's a place where he speaks, talks. It's a place where I speak and talk, but mainly I'm there to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And uh, I'm going to read this verse of scripture to open up this, this passage. Uh, the key to life. I kind of want to deal with that thought this morning. The key to life. Uh, and I'm not necessarily talking just about eternal life, but... That is also most necessary, but I want to talk about life here on this side of eternity. The time we have here to uh, engage ourselves in the ways of the Lord and His Word and what He desires for us. And so I want to talk just a little bit about that today and speak from my heart to you, from heart to heart. Is that okay? Yes, sir. I can do that this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. The Bible says to us, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. And I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both, that both thou and thy seed may live. Let's pray. Thank you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is forever settled in heaven. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that it is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. And thank you, Lord, that your word can be trusted. Thank you, Lord, that here in the United States of America, in this city, we still have a choice to choose who we will serve and what we will do on a daily basis. Father, even if the privilege was not afforded us through the system, we would still choose life. We would choose to live our lives for your glory and for your purpose and for your plan in our lives. Lord, bless the hearers this morning and bless them to hear what the Spirit said to them. Lord, speak through my mouth today and my vessel today as I offer it to you. Uh, as a vessel to speak things that are truly from heaven. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, <clears throat> when we think about life, and we think about what life really is about, yesterday uh, we were 
taking the time to clean out my mother-in-law's home. And the family had gotten together and, and uh, everyone, as we come together, there was a lot of questions as, what is this and what is this for? And, and uh, that's something I cherish and so on and so forth. And, and, but one of the things I, I seen and recognized yesterday as we were doing that, there was a bunch of keys in the drawer that, uh, that she uh, had placed all of her keys in a drawer and she had everything labeled what fit what and where it went uh, in all the property and where it went in the house or whatever the case was. It had little labels on it that said this is the key for this and this is the key for this and such and such and such. And as I was looking through those keys and, and just one bundle after another, somebody would hand me a bundle and I'd get another bundle and, and I've never seen so many keys in my life together in one spot. You know, if you've got keys, you've got authority. That's right. Yeah. The more keys you have, the more authority you have. Amen? Amen. And so I'm looking through these keys and I've seen how each one of them were itemized what this fits and where this goes and you go outside over here and you open this door with this particular key and such. And as I was looking at them, the Holy Spirit just dropped it in my heart. He said, Son, I have given my people the key. I have given my people the key for life. Yes. Amen. I've given my people the key to live their life prosperous and blessed. You know, there's so many questions uh, in all of our minds in, in given times in our lives when change comes and when difficult times hit and when we're faced to make decisions in difficult times it's a very it's a time that we have to be very careful we make choices that benefit the kingdom of God that benefit the Lord and that are choices that will also, in, in, in the long run also benefit us as God's people. Choices are very, very important in our lives. And, you know, I've heard sayings in life many times before, you know, and I remember the, uh, <clears throat> the little uh, uh, story or the little picture show of Forrest Gump. And, uh, boy, that's been a long, long time ago. Have you ever seen that, that picture movie and our picture show and just a little bitty fella, and you know, he always would he'd make that statement in that show, and it became a phrase that a lot of people picked up on, that even I did at times, and I thought, you know, it's something to think about. And he says, you know, Mother always said that life is like a box of chocolates. You open the box up, and you never know what you're going to get. And, you know, when I listened to that, I thought, you know, that sounds good and it sounds like it's right. Right? It sounds like it's something we as God's people can apply to our lives. But let's look at it from another angle in order to try to understand really what it says. Because that little phrase can really get you off track if you're not careful. It can get you to think that, well, all i got to do is just go through life. And really, I don't have anything to say about it. It's like a box of chocolate. And uh, you just don't know what you're going to get. You see, I look at it from a different angle. I can eat anything in that box of chocolate. <laughs> yes. See, when I look at it that way, it's like, well, my God, there's life in every piece. <laughs> right? But you know, in his situation, in that little fellow's situation, <clears throat> he was suffering a, a hard time and a very difficult time. So I don't think it's always true to say that we don't know what we're going to get because the Bible teaches us we do know what we're going to get. The Bible says power of life and death is in the tongue. Yes, it is. That our tongue chooses life or chooses death or a death scenario kind of situation. We could talk ourselves into something good, or we could talk ourselves of something, talk ourselves out of something good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the way we think about something and the way we speak about something does matter. 
When difficult times hit our lives, it does matter how we perceive that thing and how we choose to live our life standing up straight, dealing with the problem. Because if we tuck tail and run or stick our head in the sand, as the, the proverbial saying is, that we stick our head in the sand like a proverbial ostrich and we, we just kind of tuck it away and think that somehow by ignoring the pain, it will somehow go away. But you know as well as I do, and those watching the television, we know that it's not necessarily true that if we could just put something in a corner and forget about it, it's what it's about, and think that someday it will just disappear. How many of you know things do not just disappear? Yeah. We have to deal with things in life and confront things in life and deal with the real issues in life about what's really happening and what's really going on. God says, I've set be He set before us life and death. He's given us an opportunity. But the thing is, I believe that life is in the choices. <coughs> That's where life is. Anytime hard times hit, hit our lives, and, and it can happen to any of us at any given time, and when it hits, we can, we're not exempt from difficult situations. Amen. The very minute I think I've got everything worked out between me and my wife, I think we have a little bit of disagreement. We rarely disagree on things. She's usually always right. <laughs> you say, is that right? Well, that's the way I deal with it. Because I would rather be a peacemaker. Amen. And I found out to be a peacemaker, you just learn to listen more than you speak. There's a lot more peace there. Now, I gave you that little bitty scenario there because my wife and I rarely is bad. And if we do, we get over it before the sun goes down and she loves me more and more every day. That was a sour joke, wasn't it? <laughs> Amen. But you know what? Life is a choice. Amen. It is a choice on a daily basis. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that God has given us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness. He's given us all things that pertain to life. Living. Most people uh, in our world today never really rejoice and live their life to the fullest because they're always looking for something different than their desire. It's necessary to receive and to accept what it is that God has given you and use it with all of your might. Whatever He has put in your hands, use it for the glory of God. Use it to bring glory to God and honor to God. And sometimes we think, Lord, you've not gifted me like this person. Or you've not gifted me like this person. If I could only be like them. If I could only have something that of, of significance. When at all the time the Lord has already given us great significance. The day we were born, he, he gifted and talented every one of us in certain areas to live life and have a life to live. You know, if all things have been given to us already, according to the Word of God, then I'm going to choose to rejoice in uncomfortable circumstances. I'm going to choose to rejoice if my take-home pay is not taking me home. I'm going to choose and rejoice if I'm being talked about and knowing I'm being talked about and the center of the, of the conversation and you walk in the room, everybody quietens down. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right. Or if the person on the job got the promotion that you should have got because you're more qualified than really they are, but they got the promotion. I'm 
of the persuasion this morning that God himself always has the last say in everything and just give it a little bit of time and the righteous and the right way will always come out on top. Amen. Always. I believe this morning that the heathen may be getting more wealthy and more blessed than what we feel like we are. But listen, the, the heathen's wealth is laid up for the righteous to buy Amen. Come on. So I think there's going to be a release coming soon for the body of Christ that some of the wealth of the wicked is going to actually be released into the hands of the righteous. Amen. Amen. Well, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be this moment, but I can guarantee you that God always wins. He always has the final say, and God's people always end up the blessed in His eyes. It may not be the way we think it should be, but it will be. One of the areas that I would like to speak to you today about life is about navigating through life. Because I ask myself this question all the time. How do I navigate through this? Because at one moment in, in, in my life, I think, oh God, there's nothing that can happen now that would even begin to distract me or discourage me. And the Lord has to humble us and make us to understand that without Him, you ever been in a place in life that there's absolutely nothing going to move me now? Nobody's going to turn me away from the Lord. Nobody's going to cause me to uh, doubt God and, and doubt the ways of God. I just won't allow it to happen. Two months later, it's like, oh my God, what's going on in my life? Yeah, I, have, you, have you had that happen? I've had that happen many times. And I've asked the Lord, I said, Lord, how do I navigate? How do I keep the same sweet presence of God in my own mind and in my own heart? Yeah. Oh, I know you never leave me, and I know that you never forsake me. I know that God, according to the word of God, I'm the righteousness of God by faith in Christ Jesus. There's times in my life I don't need anybody to come up to me and quote a scripture to me. In fact, it's the most infuriating thing I want to hear is somebody quote a scripture and say, this is what you need. You think in your mind, my God, I've already been there and I've heard that scripture 749 times. Already. In fact, I quoted it 30 times before you gave it. And you rebuke the devil and he's not buked. <laughs> he's not backed up. He is not moved. He still keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. Hitting us, hitting us, hitting us. And I know, don't ever stop quoting the scriptures. Don't ever stop giving scripture to other people because it's always good to give scripture. Because that's the final saying. I know that. I understand that. But this is what I'm saying is this. There's times in our lives that we're going to have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Just me and God. I have never went to the Word of God and sat down with the Word of God and prayed earnestly from my heart saying, Oh God, I need your help and I need your guidance without the Holy Spirit resting within my spirit and giving me peace about any situation. Yeah, amen. Never. Trouble is, is when I try to fix it myself. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. That's right. When I try to figure it out, oh God, I can just, I can just figure this out and I just continue to go about my activities and someday, somehow, you <laughs> soon, it's all going to just be disappearing and by golly, I'll just deal with it later. I try to figure it out right here. May I say to you this morning, the answer is not right here. The answer is right here. And the Word of God and the sweetness of the Holy Spirit is always the answer. Yesterday when I got before the Lord, He spoke this to my, 
my heart. He said, I'll give you the key to life. And preacher, what is the key of life? Let me give it to you real quickly. I've already given it to you, but let me make sure that I give it to you now. <coughs> Choose. Life is in the choosing. It's in the choosing. It's what we choose to do. And you can't do that without the Lord. I can't do that without the Lord. I understand that. But there's a time in our life it's necessary for us to make choices consciously with understanding I'm going to make the choice to go the straight and narrow. I know preachers don't talk about this too much anymore. But I choose to walk the straight and narrow. I don't choose the broad way. I won't do that today by the grace of God. I don't want the broad way. I don't want to go back to the broad way of thinking and just let everything come as it will and come as it goes. I don't go back to that way of life. I choose to say, Satan, you will not govern my mind. You will not interfere. I choose. I choose to do it. Sometimes it's very hard to do that. It's difficult to do that because the enemy is doing everything he can. But listen to this. I'll tell you something. A story of navigation, navigating through life is there's something about the factor of the love of God and the passion we have one for another that keeps us in connection with the truth. Jesus said You're gonna, people are going to know that you're my disciple by your love one for another. How much you care one for another. I watched yesterday as family members, they just cared one for another. And it, it was like one family member says, you know, could I, could I have that? That would mean so much to me. Could a little bitty thing, whatever it is, a little, a little something. It, now with me, I just give everybody everything. That's, it's like, it's like, well, not my problem. Take it. <laughs> Take it. You can have it. Because that's just in me that way. That it, there's, you know, giving is, is something that's in the nature of the child of God. It's just in our nature. It's just, yeah. we want to give. Yeah. We want to help. Even, even when we think and feel like it ourselves, we can't help. There's, what can I do? On Sunday morning, or what can I do on, on Monday morning, or what can I do to help somebody else? And we feel so inadequate when all of the time the Lord just wants us to be ourselves and just navigate through life with His love in mind. Love. I don't know, man, anything the scripture says but to love them. I don't know, man, nothing but to love them. Oh, they've been mean to me. Uh, they, they've been talking about me. They, they, they've not, they're, not, they're not acting right. And, and they're not doing right. And, and, you know, I know. And they also know about you. Mm -hmm. Because in the mind of that person, whomever that person is, they think that you're not doing right. Listen, we're not responsible to help people do right or make people do right. We're only responsible to love. Amen. And the choice that I make on a given day and you make on a given day is up to you. You see your sons and your daughters making decisions that you know are hurtful and harmful to them, but you've already told them ten times in the last year. And you've encouraged them, sweetheart, don't do that. That's not good. That's Oh, please, don't do that. And, and, and this is the way that you raise your children and, and, and would you take some advice and, and so on and so forth. And they're still not doing what you suggested to them to do. Now, some of us want to take charge and put them in a proverbial prison of some kind and make them do it because of the way we talk to them. we we'll make you do that. This is it. And this is the way it is. It's the Bible say. It's better just to let people choose. Because yeah. Yeah. that's the way the Lord works with us. Oh, I know I need to pray more uh, today. 
And I know I need to pray tomorrow <coughs> and the next day. And, and I know that and I understand that. But there's no human being that can make me or even encourage me enough to do it. I have to say within myself, I choose to do it. Because I choose to follow the Lord. That's when you get the blessing of heaven. Woo, glory to God. That's when the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. But if you're doing something because you feel you're made to do it, and that's where the transfer of, of young people, you know, teenagers, you know teenagers? Teenagers are starting to develop their identity and they're 13, 14 years old and they start, you know, standing up straight and they start saying, why? They really started way before that, but the why is really intellectual now because they're finding out they're going into puberty and all of those things. And listen, mamas and daddies, I encourage you so much, and grandmas and grandpas, pull those teenagers aside and say, sweetheart, can we talk? Don't say, we're going to talk. <laughs> and we're going to talk right now. Right now. Tell you something, your teenagers will resent that. Right. They can't do much about it when they're 12, 13 years old. But when they're 17 or 18, try to pull on their jaw. You might get your jaw boxed. <laughs> Why? Because we've got to give all people the opportunity when they're coming into the age of understanding things. We've got to give them an opportunity to make choices themselves. Here's what parents should be doing. Parents should be saying, now, you know, can I share something with you about life? Can I share with you about decisions? And maybe you want to share something about your, your life, that you've made mistakes. Amen. Don't push it on. That's right. Amen. But say... Can I help? Because I, I want to be here and try to understand them intellectually. Try to understand where they're coming from. They don't always need a woman. <coughs> Sometimes they need just to understand truly what's going on. We expect a 13-year-old to know everything already, even though they think they already know. They really don't, right? 13-year-old? Right? 14? They really don't know. 15? 16. I remember in school, man, when I was going to school, I thought, man, when I get into high school, it's almost over. Because I didn't like school. I didn't like school. I can't wait to get out of grade school. I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, I'm glad that you tuned in today. This is Pastor Kissel again. I pray that you enjoyed the broadcast today. And if you would, and if you would like to, you could write us here at 4600 North St. Joe Avenue. Uh, 47720 or you could call us here at the church at 436-3733 and that's area code 812 and if we could help you in any way be of an encouragement to you in any way just let us know God richly bless you today bye bye